I have a second channel, Cube Comp MTDX. Hey everybody, before we start off this first video, I'd like to go ahead and give you a little bit of a preface on what's going on here. Um, so it's going. This video is going to have um, kind of a part one and part two, just really two separate videos. So two two videos. Um, so essentially, um, a client on Nextdoor contacted me, or um, they had a post put out, and I uh, reached out to them. They uh, had a um, had a HP system. This one one of those little bitty motherboards that runs off of a laptop adapter. It's a desktop system. Um, it utilized a 35 watt TDP Celeron uh, socket 55 processor, and unfortunately, due to the nature of design of that machine, the max it would support would be a 35 watt TDP chip. Whereas I had a 65 watt TDP Pentium Sandy Bridge laying on hand, um, so what I ended up doing is I ordered a motherboard off of uh, eBay. The seller mentioned that it was tested and working. Um, once I got it. I, I gave, of course, I gave it a look over, but I failed to notice something on that board. Uh, right next to the power connector, which the power connector itself had a little bit of chip in it, um, the ATX power connector. Um, it had a, uh, a small chip in the motherboard, which did mess up some of the circuitry. I did not notice this until I had the board put into the system. <laughs> and then the, when the thing failed to start, I was like, oh, something right here. And once I managed to get to turn on, I smelt the wonderful burning smell. So I knew something was wrong with the motherboard by then, and then I noticed the spot on the side of the board. But you know, even even I, or even I tend to overlook stuff by mistake, and I happen to this time. But I still would like to share this video with you guys because it's um, it involves me um, finally building a system into that uh, old Dell Dimension 2400 case that I. Um, parted out last year uh, in 2019 so anyways guys hope you guys enjoyed this video and there'll be a part two on this when I get the replacement motherboard and finally get this thing working right hey everybody here we have this HP computer for service um, the original plan for it was to just do a simple CPU upgrade on it uh, this machine has a Celeron um, processor it's a low-end Celeron this is a uh, Pavilion P2 PC, model number P2-1123W. Likely meaning that it could have been a Walmart model. Um, now, you'd think that, you're like, okay, well, couldn't we just drop a CPU in this thing? Normally, that's what you would think. Now, this one does have a socketed processor, but there's one problem whenever you go to try to upgrade this system. So this is a SOC 1155 Intel and uh, it's got a pretty low-end Celeron in it. It's a, uh, I forget exactly what model it is. I'd have to power this up to see for sure, but um, or I can just look up the specs and include the information in the video description over here in the video. But anyways, um, the processor in this thing is pretty low end. The thing about it is it's a 35 watt TDP processor. The one hand I do have on hand, which the plan was to upgrade this, this uh, machine with, is this uh, dual core Pentium Sandy Bridge. So this is a Sauron Sandy Bridge, and this is a Pentium dual core Sandy Bridge. It's a Pentium. G640, I think, is what it says. Uh, SR059, 2.8 gig. You drop it in this machine. The machine briefly start up, starts up for a second, and says that this this CPU is not compatible. The system will shut down in five seconds or, or momentarily, and the machine shuts down. The problem is this motherboard cannot support anything over a 35 watt TDP processor. It's, it's by design, so. If you've been watching my videos for quite a while, you may know about my TV box slim up there, that little bitty set-top box up there. Yeah, that's actually a x86 computer. It's got one of those small HP motherboards in it, except that one has a soldered-on AMD. Um, this is a like E300 series 
APU. So very low end AMD dual core APU, low power draw. This thing runs off of a laptop adapter. So does this one. If you look at the back of it, see right there is the the, uh, the power jack. This one runs on 18.5 volts. That's a common laptop supply voltage. This thing does not have a built-in power supply. You, it looks like you could theoretically install one if you were to drill with these rivets, but I mean you could put in a, a better motherboard, but how would you be able to put any uh, expansion cards in it when the case does not even give you the provisions for it? So the thing about this system is you're, you're pretty much limited by its design. Now, as mentioned, I mean you could drop in a, a micro HX size motherboard. But you wouldn't be able to use the expansion slots, none of them, because of the uh, the case does not even allow you to put expansion slots in it. So this case is a very big limiting factor. So the plan for this system is we're just going to uh, full out replace it. We're going to be saving the optical drive and the hard drive. Those will be going over as well as the memory. We got six gigs of DDR3 in this machine. That's gonna get transferred over. This heatsink fan will get transferred over. Um, the only thing that's not gonna get transferred over is the uh the the motherboard and a CPU. I might even transfer the fan over. Who knows? But um so yeah. So roughly a year ago, sometime in twenty nineteen I posted a video about these older Dell Dimension cases, um, whether you could use them for system builds or not. Well, I completely gutted this system out and only left the power supply in it. I mean, that's it. The power supply is the only thing left in it, and I'll probably swap in that too because I think that's a 200 watt unit. We want at least, I'd say, a 250 watt in this one. But um, you can see I've already pulled the motherboard. All that good stuff, and it looks like the only thing that would not work would be these audio jacks. Um, it does have your front panel uh, connector. It also has USB. This is a USB header for the two USB 2.0 ports inside there. So we're going to be using this case to build this system. Here's like the back of it. It's power supply. It is the Delta 200 watt unit, so we're going to be uh, swapping that out for a, at least a 250 watt unit. So the motherboard I got for this got on eBay. I got it from a seller. I think it's called Red Door Tech, something like that. I'll have to look up the information for sure. But um, very well packaged. You can see they conveniently taped the. Uh, I.O. showed right on the uh, bag here and actually unlike many sellers I've ordered motherboards and stuff from on eBay they use an anti-static bag for this um, must be a pretty big vendor so this motherboard came out of an Acer system uh, it's a socket 1155 and I'm going to be dropping in that Pentium dual core into this motherboard and I'll be transferring over the heatsink fan and all that good stuff and we'll be building this system using this. Okay, so we got the uh, power supply um, swapped out for a different one. This is a uh, this is a FSP 250 watt unit and it has all the newer connectors, a 24 pin as well as plenty of SATA connectors for the optical drive and the hard drive. So now I'm going to get the uh, motherboard ready to install. Okay, so I'm going to install our processor. To give you a little bit of background information on the uh, the owner of this machine, it's just an elderly couple. They only use this thing really for like browsing the internet and just basic stuff, picture editing, things like that. And uh, the reason why I bought this particular motherboard, why is also why I didn't really, it's why I didn't buy like a uh, Gigabyte or an ASUS or whatever board. Um, it's because the seller only wanted like like twenty five dollars for this board with free shipping, and they shipped it priority mail. Um, so that's, I'd say it's a pretty good deal, and they did test it as working. So we'll see for sure once they get installed in the system. Um, said it's a used pull, but uh, 
As long as it works, that's the key thing. Now, I, I do see there's a little bit of damage to this HCX connector right there, but the power supply should still be able to plug up to that and work just fine. I don't see any bent pins in this uh, LGA socket, so should be good there. So we'll go ahead and install our CPU first thing. That way we don't risk damaging those little bitty pins. So this particular uh, this particular Intel chip came out of a um, come out of HP All in One. I pulled this probably about I want to say two years ago. It's been it's been a little while. Um, glad I'm finally putting it to use somewhere. Let's set that right in there. And before I install the cooler, I'll be sure to uh, clean off the uh, top of the CPU with some rubbing alcohol. And I'll do the same with the uh, heatsink fan. First thing first, um, I'm going to actually mount the cooler. This will make sure it does mount. The reason why I say that is because um, I might just might have to take this uh, mounting bracket off of this other motherboard because I'm not sure if that one's going to be compatible. That was just left there by the uh, the technician whoever or whoever pulled this motherboard from the system. So I'm gonna go ahead and set you right over here. And now we'll get to find out what the CPU is. I like I mentioned, I uh, can't remember what it was when I last powered up this system. The complaint, the reason why I got this thing in for service, the complaint was sluggish performance and of course I went I went on site and did a little assessment of the machine and the CPU was just, anytime they uh, watched like a video on YouTube and they like listened to music and they went open up a different tab in Chrome or they did something else on the machine, then once the CPU would max out a lot of times you would get stuttering in the sound you get weird noises and that was actually the primary complaint. Um, and I, and I figured the, probably the best way to alleviate that would be to give it some better CPU performance. And doing this little rebuild will allow them to expand the machine better in the future if they wish. This thing here, you practically can't you you practically can't do much with. Now I can say this: there are some Intel. I think there are some Intel i3s and i5s that. Um, or 35 watts, I don't know for sure. I'm just going to buy the information I found on the HP website regarding this system, the, the uh, CPU support list. But due to the fact that this machine utilizes a um, DC to DC power supply on board and gets its power from a laptop adapter, adapter you just um, there's just not much you can do with the thing. Okay. So I need to get some paper towels. Better not use any toilet paper. That's a very high demand item right now with the coronavirus going on. <laughs> okay, so let's see if this heat sink fan will have what will fit. The existing bracket that's on this board. No, that one sets way too high. So I will have to pull the motherboard out of this other computer and we'll have to swap the bracket over. So let's see how hard it's going to be to get this bracket off of here. Okay, so I, actually we're going to have to do... <laughs> this is one thing I, I do not like about Intel. 
is, well, hang on. It's one of the things I dislike about Intel's design is on this particular setup, we're going to have to take out these uh, these three screws in order to get this back plate off. And another thing that I just can't stand about Intel is um, the fact that they had to change up the size, the the, the um, displacement or the the sizing of these holes when they move from. LJ775 and your sockets like LJ1155. So that way you cannot use your existing socket 775 cooler. Because let me tell you, I got a crap ton of 775 coolers in my stash. But um no. They're 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 useless on this platform. Thanks to that. Thanks to thanks to the sizing being just a tad bit off. And honestly that's that's why I primarily have built with AMD over the years. Because AMD, well, for the most part, for example, with AMD, on the newer, of course, the uh, the socket AM4 Ryzen's, um, if I wanted to, I could use a heatsink fan assembly that was compatible with socket 754. I mean, it it would work. The the clip with the clip with the uh, clip mounts, it should it should be able to work. Whereas with this, it's like forget it. Now, I can't say that coolers that utilize um, mounting through the motherboard, AMD has changed up things quite a bit in various areas over time, but if you're just, if we're just talking about a standard uh, clip-in heatsink fan, the newer ones would, would uh, no, excuse me, the older ones would work just fine with the newer, with the newer motherboards. So we're going to carefully lift this out. Now we should be able to get this bracket right out of here. Yep. And it comes right out. See, I don't... The thing is... I've mostly bit with AMD over the years, so Intel guys don't freaking laugh at me. <laughs> it's just I have not dealt with Intel's stuff that much, and you know, seeing stuff like this, I'm kind of glad I haven't had to. So we'll shift gears again. Now we're gonna go ahead and pull out this motherboard, so that way I can get access to its back plate. So we're going to disconnect all these cables. So I'll be getting to keep this motherboard in CPU and I probably may have a project plan for it at some point. Perhaps um, having to do with a TV box setup. Because although the TV box in the living room does perfectly fine, it does draw a bit more power than I would really like out of a system that's just used for watching YouTube. So I might be doing something with it. I have not made a decision yet. Now the feasibility of being able to cram this setup into a set-top box is probably low because of the fact that this one has a hotter running CPU than the basic little AMD uh, E-Series APU. But I'm, I may be able to figure out something for it. Perhaps I might drop this, I might replace the motherboard in the TV box cube with this motherboard. It's be a drop-in install. Yeah, so overall, I'm not a fan of this design from HP, but I, I can't say that um, the motherboards out of these things do make for interesting little projects. Yeah, I did find them. I did actually did find a seller selling through Newegg selling these motherboards for a really cheap price. I forget how much it was, but it wasn't a lot at all. So, 
So if any, any of you guys are just looking for a basic little motherboard for a low-end Intel socket length 5 I mean that's an option. Your CPU selection will be very limited though. I mean you'll be limited to uh, <laughs> CPUs with a max of 35 watts TEP which is not a lot for this socket. There's our little bitty motherboard. So I'm going to set this chassis to the side. We're going to need it back here a little bit to pull the hard drive and optical drive out of, as well as that fan possibly. I'm probably going to save the fan out of it. Okay, so this is the back plate that we're needing here. So we'll go ahead and pull that out. So we got to take the CPU out. <laughs> So the CPU, I forgot to mention earlier, this is a Celeron G460. SR0GR, 1.8 gigahertz. So yeah, it's a lower, it's a pretty low frequency chip. Obviously it had to be, to be a 35 watt. I don't want to wreck up the, uh, little bit of, uh, pins or pads on this socket either. <clears throat> I tell you, you know what I find funny is the fact that that was not even tight. Carefully pull this one out. Grab this back plate, and they always have to put adhesive on these things. Why? <laughs> At least it, well, it left me this right there. Let's see what the other motherboard has on it already. Has nothing, so yeah, I probably want to pull that. Now, there is a uh, piece of like material between this metal, but we prefer to save everything if possible. Don't know what the feasibility that's going to be. Okay, I did sort of manage to get it off there, but uh, it's, 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 it's like it's made out of a, uh, like a paper fiber material. Yeah, definitely intended to be like single use like a lot of stuff these days. You know, they could have used a small piece of rubber there, but no, no. That would have, uh, that would have cost a little too much money, wouldn't it have? So, <laughs> let's, uh, see if we can make do with this. Yeah, it looks like. Well, never mind. I was going to say something like this could be transferred over, but actually that's not the case. So we definitely have just got to make do with what we have here. I guess I can blame Cooler Master for this one. How ridiculous. I'll be honest, uh, seeing stuff like this makes me have a lot more respect for AMD. For their simplicity of how their heat sinks are designed. Not this crap. I mean, dang, Intel charges the arm and leg for their chips and you get this for a heat sink system? Like, come on. It's like, how ridiculous can you get? Yeah, of course, we have an alignment problem with this little gasket, or this, whatever you want to call it. Like I say, if it ain't lined up just perfectly fine, it's going to give you problems with, uh, with mounting your, uh, <laughs> mounting your heat sink. Okay, I did manage to get this thing somewhat through there. And we should be able to complete the installation. 
with this bracket. Okay, now we're going to install our CPU. Okay, so the back plate is installed as well as the uh, CPU. And I'd say I think we can just blame Cooler Master for that. Um, because, look, this was the back plate that came off this motherboard. It does actually separate from this. So, these two are actually not permanently bound together. Now, they were just actually stuck together with an adhesive. But it's like, come on, seriously. <laughs> it's like, come on, man. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and install this on the other motherboard so that way we can mount a CPU back in it to protect those little bitty pins because I don't want those to uh, get damaged. And that's a uh, thing you got to watch out for with these Intel uh, LGA so um, sockets as well as the, uh, the ones that AMD uses too. Now what's nice is this uh, particular uh, bracket um, does not you don't have to have it it's not bound to the uh, cooler back plate which is a good thing because I'm thinking I'm gonna try to see if I can modify one of my LGA 775 heat sinks to work with this board because the holes on the motherboard are only slightly different in location to LGA 775 And I might be able to modify a push pin cooler to work with this thing. And I have a cooler in mind that would that would be perfectly fine for this particular CPU. The uh, Sauron, as it's a very low TDP chip. And drop that one in there. Okay, so now we're going to swap out these two uh, RAM modules. Motherboard, this motherboard only offers two DIMM slots, which is fine enough for this right here. This is uh, 6 gigs of RAM. And I'll tell you this, so this is a really funny combination. You know, low-end Celeron chip with uh, 6 gigs of RAM. And honestly, guys, I don't know if uh, this machine ever had its memory upgraded. Because I'm looking at these modules and they're both Hynix. They both look like they're factory to this system. I mean, unless someone uh, upgraded both modules at the same time. Now, I mean, that's a possibility. But, I mean, the woman did tell me that she bought this machine from a shop or somewhere. Perhaps maybe they dropped in some additional RAM, but anyways... And then swap in the other one. Okay, so now I'll go ahead and clean up the uh, processor as well as the uh, heatsink fan. So, again, we're going to be swapping over the uh, cooler. This cooler should be perfectly adequate for this, for this Pentium. It looks like it was a well over stacked cooler for the chip it was being used on. I mean, I've seen I've seen a factory boxed Intel heat sinks that had less mass than that. Matter of fact, the newer AMD Ryzen, uh, like for example, the heat sinks that came with the Ryzen 2200G and 2400G systems I built uh, last year, 
the heat sink was actually smaller than that. And that was for a 65 watt TDB chip. So, there you have it. So we want to go ahead and wipe this down good. Now, you don't have to be absolutely perfect because of course we're not looking to make record numbers in crisis. <laughs> this is not a very, very hot running chip. But we do want to do as good of a job we can on cleaning this up. And I'm sure somebody's going to be in, in, in the comments like, why are you spreading your thermal paste? It's all personal preference. I usually spread it but there are some cases where I'll put a daub and a little glob in the center. And I should say this uh, <laughs> this uh, rubbing alcohol is uh, good to have with the uh, coronavirus situation going on. This stuff makes a good cleaner. Okay, now we're going to see how this cooler mounts up. It should mount up just fine. Now that we have its the correct bracket for it. So looking at it and we have good uniform coverage of the CPU so it did melt just fine. Okay so this motherboard is ready to drop into the system. Okay before we can drop the motherboard then we need to go ahead and uh, mount in this higher shield plate. These things can go in easy and sometimes they can be a real pain in the butt to get in, into your system. It just depends. What kind of day on what kind of day it's having? Looks like whoever pulled this thing out wasn't quite the most gentle with it. Not not too big of a deal. I just got to bend some. I got I got to bend some pieces back straight on it. That's one aggravating thing about these things.
is if any part is just a little bit off, <laughs> they're gonna be a pain to install, to reinstall. The thing I can't stand is when you press on it, press in on the thing to try to push in, and it, for some reason it goes all the way through, and your hand goes there with it, and cut your cut your hand wide open. That's why you gotta be really careful with these things because they will tear you up. They will tear you up if you are not careful. And this is Milton Crooked, of course. <laughs> there. Okay, it's in there now. Okay, so we'll go ahead and drop in the board. You always need to make sure that all the holes line up in the right spots. In this case. I think I forgot to mention, this is my very first time ever reusing one of these older Dell Dimension cases. In you know, newer Dell systems, you can practically forget about rebuilding systems in them, but uh, these older ones, some of them you can. So, it's pretty neat. Um, now, there are some, and as far as the newer Dells goes, there are some exceptions, like the, for example, the Dell Vostra 420. Or four, excuse me. I think it's a 430A. It's back here on the floor. That thing is practically the same in design as a standard eight, uh, micro HX system. Okay, so we gotta get this one screw started. That'll be one that we'll use to keep everything else in place. Now I'm gonna finish installing the rest of these screws. Okay, motherboard's been bolted in. Let's go ahead and start plugging up cables. We'll still need to swap over the optical drive and the hard drive. That'll be on the list. Okay, so this is the front panel header. It should go right there. Yeah, these motherboards do use a pretty standardized pinout. Now some of these Acer boards, the extra four pins, I can see this off right here, the extra four pins, sometimes they use those for like an Ethernet activity indicator. That's pretty cool. But uh, anyways, I'm going to plug in this USB header right here. Now this one does have a rather weird... Uh, it's the front panel audio connector, which is around here somewhere. There it is. Um, yeah, that's not the typical design you have on these newer boards, so we're going to just have to admit it. Um, the uh, client was not using that front panel jack anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and um, pop this front bezel off of here. I think we're going to need to anyway in order to install the drives. The optical drives anyway. We're selling just one, but i got to figure out how to cover up the uh, empty bay on this other one. Just 
spin this around. Okay. Just so I can get a better look at this uh, front panel header. Or at least the uh, one that utilizes the uh, USB and audio jacks. I'm not sure why that, uh, that, um, where is it? Oh, this cable here. Why is there so many wires there? Shouldn't, I don't think you would need that many just for a audio jack, but, uh, beats me. Okay, so here are the two cables going into this little circuit board. This is the one for the USB headers, and this is supposedly the one for, it's for the audio jack. This machine actually might be from, um, the early high definition audio generation. Um, I think motherboards with HD audio, like Realtek HD audio, for example, I think those started to get more common around 2004, 2005, um, where they more or less went away from the older um, AC97 audio. So these actual wires could be for um, like port detection, which would tell the uh, the, uh, the sound device that you have a uh, headphone plugged in or whatnot. So we're just going to mount this back in there and just go with it. Should be fine. Like I say, the audio jack won't be usable, but not a really big deal in this situation. As uh, they weren't using it before, and I'll just make sure they're aware of it. Because they were actually using a... They had a, they had a, a set of uh, desk speakers behind the system. Well, on the desk, rather. Excuse me. They plugged into the back of the system, is what I meant to say. And since we have the front bezel off of this uh, chassis, we're going to swap over the optical drive. And I'm going to remove this, I'll just remove the screws off camera, so it'll be just a second. Okay, now I'm going to slide the optical drive into place. It's like this one just uses only one screw to hold the entire drive in place. That's what it looks like, so that's what we'll go with. Okay, now we're going to install the hard drive into this thing. There's a screw in the bottom. Put the system right down there. It has to come out. And there's also one down inside here that comes out to release the hard drive cage. And it's just slide out to the left. that. I'm going to briefly, briefly disconnect this as it's kind of in the way. And we'll install the hard drive. Now I'm just going to drop this whole assembly back in. Okay, so optical drive is back in there, and I got the uh, front bezel back on. I had to find me a, a shield to go across here because um, I did not have, or of course, uh, this machine wasn't going to use a second optical drive, whereas the original Dell machine did. Um, so I didn't have a OEM uh, cover for this style of Dell uh, chassis, so I had to improvise a little bit. I had a, a silver one in my collection and I actually had the hot glue in the place to keep it still so it's in there now and now we'll go ahead and 
continue on with hooking up cables and whatnot. So the hard drive's in, so we can go ahead and hook up all that. Let's see, I mean, the DVD drive's in. We can hook up the uh, power, all that good stuff. So go ahead and get that taken care of, and we also need to go ahead and plug in our fan. We're install our fan into the back of the machine. Okay, now we're going to install our fan. So, the um, original Dell cooling fan that would cool the CPU and had that big bracket behind it would just snap in here, but the case actually has four holes provision in just for a standard 92 millimeter fan. So, and they do the holes do line up, so it'll be as simple as that. Now it's going to plug into the motherboard. Here we'll give this thing a quick look over. And I think we are ready to test this thing out. See how it does. Um, I do need to install a uh, cover over this expansion slot, but that can wait until I'm just about done with it. So, we're going to test this thing out see how it does. Hopefully it runs. Okay, so I got power plugged in, and let's see how this combination of a Dell, Acer, and HP does. Okay, guys, um, I think I spotted our problem. So, a few minutes ago, I, of course, as you saw in the video, I tried to start the machine. And I was like, okay, maybe it's not seeing a power on signal. Okay, well, um... So I pulled the connector out and I manually tried grounding out each of those pins on that front panel header right there to no avail. Okay, so guys, you remember seeing that chip in the uh, ATX power connector? Well, look closely at the motherboard right next to it. I'll zoom the camera in so you can get a better view. Okay, guys, you see that right there? There's a big chip in the side of the motherboard. You can probably see it right there. There's a chip inside the motherboard, and it's right next to where that power connector got broken. I did not notice that earlier when I was putting this together, but, um, yeah, we have damage, and you see, as you can see, it ate through some traces, and perhaps that might be why this thing isn't turning on. Now, here's where it gets better, guys. So, I tried manually jumping the uh, power on signal into the power supply, and that did force this thing to start up. And all the fans and stuff ran, but, and, and actually, I did not get a post. But within 10 seconds, I started to smell something. And I was like, oh, great. And so I unplugged power. And, and then I noticed this spot right there. So the motherboard has been damaged right there. And it's rendered it unusable, unfortunately. Yeah, right there. So what I'm going to do is um, I got some other stuff I can throw in here. That's better than what she had as far as performance. It may not be quite as new as what was in that HP, but um, it's the best I can do. Um, and I'm going to contact this eBay seller. Apparently, this was not. This did not have. I don't think this happened in shipping. I have to look at the box and see for sure. There was a small spot in the box, but it apparently seemed like there was some mishandling by the seller, one of the uh, seller's technicians. Um, that caused damage to this motherboard right there. So, yeah. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull that back out and I'll get you a closer look at it. Okay, I just got the board pulled out and have a look at that. Guys, I don't understand how I missed that. I really don't. Usually, I have, I'm very detail-oriented. I did spot the crack in the uh, power connector, but somehow I did not notice that. It's almost like a screwdriver had slipped and, you know, bam, went right through that. I mean... <laughs> I mean, here's a look at the back of it. I mean, there's a humongous chip right here in this board. Big chip, and I mean, that took a that that took a lot of uh, 
effort to you know, make that kind of damage. It's, it's almost like a screwdriver slipped. Maybe when they were disassembling this thing. You know, guys, I, here's, I, here's what I think. Here's my theory. They tested this motherboard still in the computer it was in. It's like, oh, okay, it works great. Let's sell the board. Okay. So they power down the system, tear down the system, and perhaps one or text was a little quick with, with working. And somehow a screwdriver, when they were perhaps unscrewing this screw right here, maybe the screwdriver slipped, cracked this, and went through the board. I don't know. But I'm gonna I'm gonna reach out to the seller and hopefully I can get this resolved. Um, I'm probably just gonna get a refund on this. Hopefully they won't make me send this back because I, I feel like this is not my fault. Um, it, it arrived in this condition. I mean I didn't notice it before. I wish I'd have noticed it before I slapped this thing together. It probably would have saved me some time. But anyways, here we are. So got the board pulled out and in that box over there I got. A uh, Athlon 64X2. I think it's a 4400 plus. It's not now. It's an older. It's an older platform, but it should still get some improvement in performance compared to what they had in that little bitty HP. So I'm kind of disappointed that um, things didn't work out as I had planned. But we just gotta make do with what we got. So, anyways. Okay, but I just got finished swapping out the uh, motherboard for this other one that I have. This is a uh, e-machine pool. It's a socket AM2. I installed a uh, Athlon 64 dual core 4600 plus in it and four gigs of memory. Uh, unfortunately, it's a little bit less than the six gigs of RAM that the previous platform had, but hopefully the uh, CPU improvement should make a difference here. Um, just to at least be able to get this thing back up running and hopefully also perform better and I'll be working with the uh, <clears throat> with the client see if they want to upgrade to something better than this but anyways now let's go and test it just a quick little power on I don't even have the hard drive hooked up I mean I do have the uh, power going to the hard drive but I don't have the hard drive hooked to the motherboard so that's the sound I like to hear and we get a successful post. Um, I do need to change out the CMOS battery. This battery right here because it's this dead. Um, the system, uh, the motherboard lost its, lost track of its time, so I got to change that battery out. This is your typical CR2032 coin slash button cell battery. So I'm going to get that swapped out, and that'll be it for this video. Um, well, actually, I'm going to end it now. So yeah, as mentioned, it's got to change out the battery, and then I'm gonna go ahead and finish setting this machine up. I may have to do a clean install of Windows. I do have a full backup of their hard drive, so we're covered there. So yeah, that's uh, unfortunately we had some hiccups, and <laughs> with that motherboard there, that's unfortunate. Um, hopefully, I'll be able to get a refund on that because I feel like, I mean, I think that was an error on their part. Um, Although I didn't notice it either when I was putting this thing together. I'm sure I'm going to go back to this video and be like, well, dadgum, there it is. And I'm sure you guys might point out too, but <laughs> it is what it is. Um, that is rebuilding. That, I guess like I said, that concludes rebuilding this old uh, Dell Dimension case into something else. Uh, this is my first time ever rebuilding a, uh, or at least using an older Dell Dimension chassis for a rebuild. So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Well, everybody, that's it for this video. But don't forget, there's a lot more interesting stuff on the channel to check out. Also, if this is your first time visiting this channel, feel free to subscribe to keep your channel. And also, don't forget to tick the bell so that we will get notified of new video posts. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. But if you really didn't like it, there is the alternative option available as well. Also, feel free to check out my second channel, CubeComp MTDX. There you'll find videos about bicycling, weather, elevator tours, and all sorts of other neat interesting stuff. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Feel free to come back and thank you for your support.